welcome to plant-based chat and Wednesday and Mercury retrograde. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling it today. I don't know about you guys, but I am thrilled and lucky. And so are you. You're lucky for watching this because Lisa's on today. And we were having the best, like, we, before we come on, we have, like, these 15-minute conversations that really could be, like, 15-day conversations <laughs> about all the things. And Lisa is not coming to us from San Francisco like usual. She is in Austin because she's an international. <laughs> well, maybe national. <laughs> we do have a 19-year-old son here. That's and, and, a disaster, by the way, when I got home last night, I was like, uh. it looks beautiful. <laughs> oh, this little section does. But if I turn the camera around, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see the truth. <laughs> There's a reason you never see the other side of this. Like my dining room table. A, if you come to my house, there's like lights and cameras because <laughs> the studio stays up. And everything gets piled on that table. Like if you if you saw it, you'd be like, I'm never talking to her again. She's so messy. That's hysterical because David, you know, my husband who you met, he helped me set up this whole like uh, camera rig in San Francisco in the kitchen. And it's so funny you said that because now it lives there and like the table's piled high. I mean, we don't even eat at our dining room table anymore. So, but I'm like here, I'm like, oh no, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to do it on the laptop, you know? It's not fancy today. You know uh, what? Uh, no one cares if it's fancy. They're just happy you're here. And oh, so and we're still doing the barbecue show. So we're doing yes. the barbecue show through summer at least. Who knows what else, where this may go. We already have like, what, from our 15 minutes, I think I could have made a list of like 20 topics that we can talk about. There's so much to cover, Kathy. <laughs> I know, thank goodness we have decades left, right? <laughs> yes. yes, definitely. So um, tell me, before we do this, so if you wanna introduce yourself a little bit in case there's someone who doesn't know who you are, and if you don't know, look in the show notes because you can go find her recipes, and tell us all about this new book that is also in the show notes. Um, well, first of all, I'm so grateful to be here. <clears throat> really honored. I love your show, and I always love doing this. It's so much fun. Um, so there, I wanted to just let you know that because you're such an amazing host. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> so I, my name is Lisa Rice, and I work with a company called We Heal, weheal.health, um, with Dr. Matthew Letterman and Alona Day, who are the physicians who uh, sort of launched the whole Forks Over Knives um, empire. They were in the original film and they published uh, several of the books and they started a new healthcare model. So I'm a health mentor. So I help people transition to a plant-based diet, um, help them with their exercise, their sleep, their stress, that kind of thing. But my passion is really teaching them how to make plant-based versions of their favorite foods. I love, this is my jam right here because I just want people like you probably do to like uh, know how good it can be, you know? So a lot of my coaching is around helping helping people do that. And, um, but yes, we have a book. Um, so it comes out on Monday. It's called Wellness to Wonderful. And the model is, um, it's diet and lifestyle, but it integrates all these other modalities that um, really help the whole person heal. Things that we don't even think about, like um, just techniques to deal better with our relationships and um, just more, you know, if we're interested in any kind of spirituality, how to bring that in. Um, polyvagal theory, which is, and then mind-body connection. So there are a lot of things that um, Matt and Alona discovered were really missing from just doing diet and lifestyle. So they've integrated these like decades of experience into this amazing model. So Wellness to Wonderful comes out Monday. And... I am really excited because I am an aspiring writer and I got to contribute to the book. So uh, I'm, so my name is for the first time on Amazon as a contributor under the, the book titles. Oh, well, make sure that you fill out your Amazon author profile and if you need help with that, let me know. Oh, thank you. Because you need to have all that stuff up there and you can have it linked to your recipe, your blog and stuff like that. Oh, thank you, okay, I'll do I that. used to, um, when Page Street Publishing first started, which was where I did my last books, I actually was the online PR person there. 
for, for oh, like wow. a year or two. So talk to me. And also, we can talk about this afterwards too, and I don't know what your travel looks like, but if you want to do something on Monday for your launch, we could do something too, if you want to oh. make a recipe from the book or something. But no, no pressure, and you don't have to say yes or no now, but I'm more than happy. If we don't do it then, you tell me and we'll just we'll make an extra show so you can do that and talk about the book and it sounds so interesting and i find that a lot of times in in our field yeah you know, i feel like my field <laughs> is i make recipes <laughs> and i teach people how to make recipes but i, I end up recipes. right i, I don't I don't know what I'd do without you if you didn't make recipes. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. And and I feel like I end up, because I, I like to make things accessible for everybody. So all the different doctors have different specificities. Is that even a word? <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> you know what I mean. Different rules, <laughs> different guidelines. And, you know, I always, sometimes I will get them mixed up, which is why I say the doctors, because, you know, if you're following one certain person for, let's say, okay, I know Dr. Estelstein does heart stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, if you're following that, I can support you in that. So if it's like, well, I can't have this thing you put in there, we can work with yeah. that. But even in my group recently, someone was saying, you know, why can't we have just a little bit of oil? And I'm like, well, you're going to get a lot of answers to this question, <laughs> and it's going to be all about the doctor they follow. Mm -hmm. So my you thing is, I mean, you just we do the best we can. What is our goal? Whole food, plant based. Some of us, for health issues, want, need to follow Dr. Esselstyn and cut out the fats. So that means oil, most nuts and seeds, or keep them very minimal, salt, those kinds of things. But then if you follow, for instance, um, Dr. Furman, he, he's whole food plant based and he integrates a lot more, you know, his G-bombs when one of those is nuts and seeds, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Shure's Eyes, okay, who I'm a big fan of, they're uh, neuroscientists mm -hmm. um, and they have a book called The 30 Day Alzheimer's Solution, which has fantastic recipes. And they use a little bit of oil, not a lot. They use a little either olive oil or avocado oil that um, she'll spray in a pan to start something. But um, and they don't use it liberally. It's like very minimally. But and they have their reasons for that, you know. So uh, so yeah, it's it can be really tough, you know, because like when you're new and you're I'm coming into whole food plant based. I want to eat healthier. I don't want to have Oreos anymore. And then right. you get a lot of these things thrown at you, which is why a lot of times, sometimes I say just pick one to read up on and then go for that. But I yeah. like that these books are coming out too, though, and especially your book, the way you're explaining it, because I feel like there's a lot about the mindset. Mm -hmm. There's a lot about super specific things about health and what to do. I, mm -hmm. I don't know that there's, and there's a lot of cookbooks you know, mm -hmm. that are super specific. But I don't know that there's this like wonderful roundingness of putting everything together. Well, one of the chapters I wrote um, for the book uh, was the nutrition chapter. And the one thing, and I write a lot about this, because the one thing everybody can agree on, there's, I don't think there's anyone who would disagree that a whole plant food is one of the best foods for you. Like there's, I don't even think there's a fad diet out there unless you're maybe the carnivore diet, I don't even know that much about it, but like keto, paleo, you know, South Beach, everybody recommends vegetables, right? And a lot of them recommend fruits and vegetables. Um, so, you know, if you're eating, and also everyone agrees that processed food is not good, highly processed food is not good for you, right? So people will go on the keto diet or the paleo diet, and they think that it's like the meat or the fat that's helping them. But what it is, is they've cut out all the processed food you know, and they're eating more whole foods. So, um, so the, the point is just, it, you know, if you don't want to completely change your plate, start adding more of those whole plant foods, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, you know, small amounts of nuts and seeds, beans, beans. I mean, everyone, you know, Dr. Greger and Dan Butner, who have done studies, you know, if you eat a, a serving of beans a day, it'll add four years to your life. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> right. So, and and they're inexpensive. One, one of the things yeah. that I loved, and I, we have a couple of questions too, or answers, yeah. um, is that 
when you add these things, so even, okay, fresh vegetables, depending on where you are, and if you're kind of in a food desert, can be difficult, but even there, you can get frozen vegetables. Frozen vegetables. Yeah, frozen vegetables sometimes are higher in nutrients because when they flash freeze them, they're at the high peak of their uh, ripeness. And so it's all those nutrients are saved there. Whereas sometimes the fresh food, by the time it's shipped across country and sat in cold storage, it's lost some of its nutrients. So yes, absolutely. Frozen food is great or frozen vegetables. I'm just thinking of like, so I, oh, you guys can't see here. I have that middle drawer and I like, I've been stockpiling broccoli for the past few months because it lasts forever. And I'm like, I'm probably just eating sawdust at the time, at the time I have it. I know, but you know what? If you're throwing it in like a stew or a soup or a smoothie or whatever, it doesn't matter, right? You're getting the nutrients. So, well, and I cut <laughs> off the stems and I save the stems. I, I'll like, um, I'll go ahead and peel them and put them in the freezer, and then mm -hmm. I shred them and make my own broccoli slaw and cruciferous crunch. So, I, the stems my favorite part. <laughs> oh, is it okay? <laughs> I'm just getting Cheryl to eat little broccoli trees. Like they have to be little bitty bitty. So, um, you know, okay. when he was little, he loved broccoli, but he didn't like the stems. So he'd eat the the, the floret part, and I'd eat the stems. <laughs> he okay. actually like that at 19. You know, a friend of mine, and I swear I must have been like 21 when I worked in a restaurant with her. She said, that's how you should decide who you're mar get married to. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You're bringing back this like very bizarre memory. So um, Kelly, well, let me start with apples. So Apple saying all the different doctors are treating different ailments, which affect a few things in their dietary recommendations. They all agree mm -hmm. with whole food plant-based, which is true. And Kelly, who's hung out with us plenty of times, says, I've struggled with this, with different doctors saying so many different things. I always feel like I'm doing something wrong. And I think especially you and I are trying to, to get that away from the table. Yes, because definitely. Even if, even if you're doing something wrong, okay, again, with the caveat exception of, if you don't do, Dr. Esselstyn said, if you don't do exactly what's on this piece of paper, I'm cutting your chest open. Okay, this does not apply to you. Right. <laughs> or something. Yeah, Dr. McDougall are pretty hardcore. Yeah. So, so they have a huge success rates with the patients they're treating with heart disease and diabetes and all those things. So. And I, and I would not, and that's why I'm kind of give that caveat, not because of any other reason than they know I'm not a doctor. But if you're just a person coming into this, trying to make your health better, you're going to make some mistakes, both for you and possibly in whole food plant-based. I mean, when I became vegetarian at 18, I kept eating vegetable ramen because I was like, I wasn't reading labels at that point. You know, when I finally read the label, it had dried chicken in there. Oh, right. Oh, oh. Who Funny thought that. that was a thing? <laughs> Gelatin, fish, oil, all that stuff sneaks into foods a lot. But you know what? You know, if I'm a, uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, this, I'm not super, super strict with that stuff. I don't eat any animal products and I keep them completely out of my house and my refrigerator. Um, and, you know, I, I use minimal oil, you know, I'm mostly oil free. But you know, my, one of my best friends is Lauren Burnick from Well Elephant, and she yes. reversed her heart disease by going whole food, plant-based, no oil, low fat. I don't have heart disease. I've never had issues with that. So I can allow little bits of fat. And if I go out to eat, um, I, you know, I don't always ask them if they'll do it without oil, like if I go to an Asian restaurant. But at home, that's what I do. So most of the time, you know. So I just think that you really have to take a look at if you are not doing this if you're doing this because you want to, like you said, get healthier, feel, have a little more energy, you know, um, then there is no mistake. You know, if you're, as, you know, every little bit that you can do is a step in the direction that you want to go. And the, I think uh, the trap that people fall into is like, and I, I experienced this when I was at the Whole Foods Medical Wellness Centers, like, you know, people would keep these food journals for me and 
and then they, you know, wouldn't bring them and they'd be like, oh, well, I was eating, you know, oatmeal for breakfast and I was having, you know, bean burritos for lunch. But then I went out and had pizza. I was with my friends after work. And so then they just throw it all out. I'm like, well, so then just the next day, have your oatmeal again. Like, let it go. And that's perfect. That's so perfect. And here's the thing. And I struggle with this too. And that's one of the things I try to be super transparent with my community because I think sometimes people that they get to see, we're kind of idolizing them as being perfect and doing things. Like I loved it when Chef AJ says, you know what, I like white rice and I eat it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there was a collective gasp at some point somewhere. Well, and, I know, Just like Dougal promotes white rice, so there you go. <laughs> right, and, and there's a lot of different things here too that you can kind of look at. And I think it is, especially with women, and I'm not saying this never happens to men either, but I think we, we're just kind of brought up to have this perfectionistic ideal that we're like, okay, so I'm going to do this and because I have, I'm a woman or I can speak to that or some other minority hmm. or whatever, you have to work a little harder, right? Mm -hmm. I was... So I say female a lot. So I was in a brass section in an orchestra, which is the equivalent of like working a construction site. That's really cool. <laughs> I love that about you. <laughs> so, you know, I can give it out as good as I can take it, but you, you had to be that way, right? You know, yeah. I worked in restaurants. And Me again, too. it's... um. It's not the pure atmosphere that we get here. <laughs> Right, yeah. like in one of my jobs, uh, one of the managers who would also kind of, it would be called harassment now, but he would kid with us. I had a good relationship with him. And he would say, do you feel harassed? Do I, is anyone, including me, stepping beyond what you're okay with? So having that kind of stuff, I think that you do still have to be, you know, I had to pay more attention to things than the guys did. I just yeah. did. Yeah. And, and I think that just, again, as, and maybe I should just say as perfectionistic people is probably a better way to put it, you know, it doesn't help us. It feels like it does. There's a little voice in my head that goes, because like I, in my um, heartbeat group, which I'm trying to move everybody over, there's a link, you get a free class, go on over, you know you want yeah. to. We, we, I added a movement section because I'm trying to do movement, I wanna have other people be able to be accountable. And even though I gave myself a day off and what I said I was gonna be accountable for, it was ridiculous. It's, you know, even it was so much better than last week's goals, but I'm always making these goals that are hard to meet. Now, I have, and we talked about this, um, a couple of weeks ago, I have to lose some weight for a health issue. And so that's what I'm working on. But that's what's kind of getting me going on this. Same thing, mm -hmm. like if you have a heart issue and you're doing a certain plan for that, great. Mm -hmm. Then there is some, some amount of accountability you have to meet. Like mm -hmm. if I could exercise five days a week, that would be beautiful. I want to do seven. Right, and I mm -hmm. want to do twice if I can, which is mm -hmm. yeah, super smart. Not, it's not. And so the same well, thing. If if you're not coming in for that that specific health issue, you could be like, I would like to walk three times a week, or I would like mm -hmm. to eat broccoli twice a week and kale mm -hmm. once a week, and just mm -hmm. try and give yourself, you know, if that's available to you. Well, even if you are having a health issue, I mean, not everyone can go from zero to a hundred, you know? So, and I think there's a really great expression. I think it's like perfection is the enemy of good. Is that what it is? Um, and we say progress, not perfection. So just, you know, for most people, it's easier to go take smaller steps. So like, instead of I'm going to walk, you know, for an hour every day, I'm going to do 10 minutes, three days a week. And then once that's, you know, feels good, then I'll add, you know, and, um, that's kind of what I tell people to do with their food, you know, just like change one meal. And if you can't do it every day, do it one or two days a week, and then we'll go to the next meal, you know? So um, it's just, you know, it, and then there are people who are like, go from zero to a hundred and that's great, but not everybody can do that, you know? 
and um yeah but and then we you and i started getting into a whole other conversation that maybe today isn't the day but I just want to, you know, and you and I are very clear about this. Like there's an obsession with white weight loss in yes. the world, in our country. And, um, you know, so what I, how I like to frame it is let's forget about weight loss. Let's eat more whole food, plant-based food. And naturally, as you do that, you will, you will end up at the weight that is good for your body, right? Because the whole, and you know, I, I probably shouldn't be saying this in public, but I don't agree with the whole BMI thing because it was created as part of that whole eugenics movement. Is it eugenic? I think so. And, and um, completely uh, discounted any people of color, of other ethnicities, or, you know, so if we're talking about like almost like you know, the perfect white person right like in other in other countries we know about um so and that's not to say you know we want to make sure that we're at a healthy weight but hopefully this obsession with that is to me not really the thing we should be following we should be following how we feel you know if, if we're eating the right foods and that will come you know what would the weight be good for you and i i Totally agree with you, but you know that already, but now everybody else knows. <laughs> and some of it too is like, it's habitual. So like in the past when I've lost weight, and again, and I want to talk about it because this isn't going to turn into Kathy Hester's weight loss show or anything like that. I may keep you updated. And that's why I'm saying I'm doing it for a specific reason too, because I don't, I think it's real easy to go, well, in our community, how many 20 something Instagram yoga model vegan recipe people, right? And I turn 58 tomorrow. That pretzel life is not for me anymore. Like I do yoga and I love stretching and all that. So not to disparage yoga, but I'm, I won't even climb over a rock. I'm certainly not going to be doing some crazy posture up on a mountain. Not happening. Not on my bucket list, right? So. I think that you just kind of have to look at what's going on with you. Maybe why, if, if you felt okay before and you don't feel okay now, and it's because you've gained weight, have, what changes have you made? Because also, one of the things could be you need to go to the doctor. You mm -hmm. need to go to your GP. Like, for instance, I have Graves' disease, which is a thyroid issue. I was diagnosed when I was 19 and I had radioactive iodine, which I have now been researching could possibly have to do with some of my liver issue. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, and it's all okay. But mm -hmm. you know, because of that, like, Oh my God, I could eat so much food. I was, if I didn't eat for a whole day, I would lose like four pounds and I weighed like 95 pounds then. But like I could eat three full dinners. This is when I ate meat and everything. So I'd eat with my football player boyfriend, come home and eat a full dinner. And I was 95 pounds. So, you know, and also the past year and a half, my thyroid has been low. So that encourages weight gain. The pandemic for me encouraged weight gain. I gained like 10 pounds during the pandemic, just making sourdough bread every day. <laughs> right. And for me, it was just, you know, I was kind of just holding my breath. And this is what I do. I can do really big projects and work really fast for about two, two to three months. So I was holding my breath doing that. And then I was still holding my breath. And I was like, oh, this is not going well. Right. So one of the things for me was we started getting takeout because I was depressed. I was anxious. I wasn't able to do all the things I was doing before. Oh my gosh, understandably, I mean, everybody, you know, like we have to give ourselves, you know, that grace that that's how, how things happen. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to, and I think it's important. That's a great way to put it. Cause I'm not looking at it to blame myself. I, I have, trust me. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm not, but I, I went through that and then I was like, okay, what little things helped the last time that I felt better? And literally it was walking, but walking isn't sustainable in a super hot summer. Walking isn't sustainable. 
you know, yeah. super cold winter. So I tried to look at the things that were my challenges and fix them. You know, the same thing with food. I'm not going to be 100%. But if I can hit 90, I'm 100% mm -hmm. vegan. Yeah, that's, but, that's what I say. I'm 100% vegan. I'm 90% whole food plant-based because I do allow processed vegan analogs here and there and a little bit of oil here and there. But that's, again, I'm not trying to reduce, you know, heart disease or diabetes or anything like that. So. Right. And I, and again, it's kind of the thing that's going on with you and you have to look through those lenses. Cause I'm seeing over here too, it's like Mary Cooper was saying, yes, I feel like I'm always doing something wrong because doctors have different viewpoints. And, and I think that that can happen a lot in our community because Yes. It, you know, and I think it's okay. Just like you pick one general practitioner, it doesn't mean you can't listen to advice from other people. But maybe yeah. at some point, you at least pick one early on and go, I'm going to learn about all the G-bombs or I'm going to watch all Dr. Greger's stuff. And then you can right. always add more information. Um, well, and one of my clients, too, is that if you don't, if you are, you know, following all these different things, you're not going to know which one is working when it starts working or wh why it's not working. So if you stick with one for a while, you do that. If it starts working, you know, that's that's it. If it's not, then try something else, you know. But um, if you're trying all these different things, you're not going to know. And it's true. And I'm totally guilty of that, too. Like, I will throw everything at it and they'll be like, yeah, let's don't do that. And I'm like, that's a good idea. So a few things. We're all like that. I mean, there's we're bombarded with so much confusing information. It's hard not to you know, be like that these days. So, well, you and know. you know, I tend towards thinking somebody else has the answer. And mm. I know some of you guys probably do too. And one of the things at this point, because I'm like, hey, I kind of know a good bit about my body and what it likes and what it doesn't and how I've done stupid things in the past. So like usually I, I just exercise till I can't move and that, that doesn't help. Just hit. That's no the <laughs> so this time I've been making sure that I stretch before, I stretch after, I'm doing a lot of restorative yoga, which is not mm -hmm. for weight loss, but for my body to feel good so that I can do the exercise the next day. So thinking of things well, in that way. Yeah, and a lot of the things that um, make us like, hold on to weight that's not healthy for us is like our cortisol levels when we're stressed out, right? We're not getting enough sleep. So restorative yoga is a wonderful Thing to be doing with your exercise and any movement it's great about moving your body every day i think you know exercise is wonderful i love to do it but you know you don't have to join a gym and start lifting weight or ride a peloton in order to get it's really about moving your body every day and we're you know our culture now really supports sitting for long periods of time which isn't it's actually not uh, normal for human beings to sit for 15 hours or eight hours eight hours even you know um, our ancestors were completely moving. And so if we think about it, like just getting up and walking around your office for five minutes or doing some stretching or, you know, just to get your body moving a little bit every day. And that makes sense too. One of the things that I've done and and you guys are going to see my exercise equipment soon and stuff, but I got, it was like this Lucite desk thing. It costs way too much, but I can take it off <laughs> on my taxes. And if you work from home, you can too. <laughs> and, I love it. And it just goes on your thing. And so like I walked for an hour and a half when I had a meeting on Monday. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and so it just can be. And, and one of the things from the heartbeat group too, because I was, I hadn't been in in a couple of days and everybody's telling me all this cool stuff they're doing. I was so excited. And someone said, yeah, but I have a lot of yard work to do. And I'm like, dude, yard, well, I didn't say dude. I, I acted like a grown up. Um, <laughs> I can type like a grown up, even if I can't talk like one. And I was like, yard work. And, and in fact, Max has, Max actually had, my dog has, dog flu which is kind of kind of like dog covid 
in that it's super highly contagious. He got it when we, we went away. So for the first week we were back, I maybe got two or three hours of sleep because he was, has this honking cough. Wow. He's on antibiotics now. They told us to wait a week. He's, he's doing better and he's hanging in there pretty good. But I got up and I'm like, I'm not riding a bike or going outside. Like I can barely make my own coffee. Right. But what I did is there was a whole sl like slew of boxes and stuff I needed to go through. So what I did is I actually, I didn't sit down and go through them. I was moving things and I was moving for 10 hours, mm. right? I probably did not burn a thousand calories and blah, 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 blah. But I got something done that made me feel more calm. Mm -hmm. I moved my body. I lifted things, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, yes. yes. And I, th I think it's so easy for us to dismiss some things like that too. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. you have another question? I, I'm trying, I, there's, everybody's been so awesome. Let's see, here we go. Okay, Angela says she has a different point of view on the topic of doctors. For many decades, the allopathic community has founded its approach based on patriarchy, even the female doctors. For me, it's spilled over to whole food plant-based. That's mm, very yeah, interesting right. too. That's interesting, yeah. Um, I, I'm having Dr. Stephanie Peacock on once a month as well. And I don't know if you've met her, but I can tell you right now, the three of us would have the best day out. Oh my gosh, we need to do that. <laughs> She's awesome. And um, she does some of the stuff. So she did study with Dr. Goldhammer and does some water fasting and some different things like that. And, but she has this, and I, I tell her, I love her approach and I love your approach too, but it is a feminine approach because like, it's not, these are toxic, get them out of your house. It's like, well, when you finish that one, here's some other stuff you could do, or here's some recipes that won't cost you money. Do you know what I mean? And so I, I do think that that's coming in to play more, but it's slower than I would like it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And, I mean, I, really, I think it just depends on the person. It's a very individual thing. Who's gonna resonate with you starting where you are? Everybody's starting from a different place. So it's really, you know, um, it's about that. And, uh, I think that if you get the right doctor or coach, um, you can, you know, you really want to find someone who's going to honor that and not tell you, you need to do this thing and you've got to change everything and be like this. You know, you want someone who will really work with you and your lifestyle and where you are in your life. Cause it's, you know, the that's the most important thing. When I'm in San Francisco, when I'm here, I'm stuck in the house most of the time because it's so freaking hot in Austin for most of the year. So I have a Peloton here and I use it, you know, I, I do the strength classes, I ride the bike because I'm stuck in the house and I'll find, I'll sit an entire day just like on the computer or reading. So mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to have something I can do. But in San Francisco, because we don't have a car and we take public transportation, I walk a lot. So I don't, you know, we have a Peloton in the apartment there, but I don't use it nearly as much because I'm like, I'm getting exercise every day. You know, I'm carrying groceries on the bus and, you know, so, um, you, know, you know, looking at our lifestyles is definitely very important. Like if you're someone who gardens, you, that counts as movement. You know, you have dogs, you walk your dogs, that counts as movement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's really important that everybody, and then, you know, then there are people who do love, you know, going to the gym every day, you know, but if you think about it, there are a lot of people who will go to the gym and they'll work out like crazy for an hour. And then what do they do the rest of the day? They sit, right? They just sit and that's not either. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, that's good that they did that movement. But then if you're sitting for eight hours straight, that's not good. So just get up and walk around a little bit while you're working. I have to, I have to do that. I have to remind myself, you know, oh, gosh, well, actually my watch reminds me now. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll tell you when you're in an airplane, that's very frustrating. <laughs> I'm trying to stand up. I'm like, I can't stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I totally know what you, I don't know what you mean exactly. And it, it can be very interesting. Like I, I'm not a super private person, even though I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. but I've always felt funny about like exercising in gyms and stuff like I don't know how to use the equipment so like when first with the bike I'm like Cheryl you will not come in here I will figure out how to lock these shoes in myself 
and then I'll call you if I can't get off. And then the same thing, like, you know, I get on, I've, we have a treadmill now too, and I got on the treadmill, I'm like, eh, you know, I'm always like, oh, I don't know. And then I'm like, okay, I'm good now. I've gotten over that hump. So doing that publicly, like, I've made myself join a gym if I would not do other movements. So I've used it as a form of punishment, even though if you guys are in the triangle area, I will say the JCC is like, kind of like the nicest place I've ever been. They even have like spa water for you in the like equipment room. You just said something really important. You said it was like punishment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how, why a lot of people are intimidated about figuring out what to do to get movement and activity in their life. And what we really encourage is finding something you enjoy, you know, um, you know, finding a way if you love, um, you know, if you if, like think back as when you were a kid, what did you love to do? Like if you loved riding horses, is there a stable near you? If you um, loved paddle boarding, is there a place where you can sign up for paddle boarding, basketball, you know, whatever it is, jump roping, you know, <laughs> dancing in your living room, you know, put some music on, but you know, just really, cause if you aren't having, if, if it feels like punishment, then it's not really serving you the way you want it to. And that is exactly right. Yeah. And so like, I'm, tr I'm trying to be curious because I'm very curious about flavors and foods and things like that. So I'm trying to look at that with exercise, mm -hmm. being curious, you know, and one of the things, and we've, I've mentioned this before, well, I like the Peloton because A, I used to love exercise classes because people, you just turn off your brain, you do what the people tell you to, you've got X amount of time and yeah. just, just give up to it. And yeah. so with the Peloton stuff and, and they're, and I think I don't didn't put it in these notes, but I'll try and send it out again. I have a like a 90 day free trial, I think. Oh, great. I, I get nothing for it. It's not an affiliate link or anything, but you have to cancel your credit card, you know, or like cancel it, put it on your calendar. Mm -hmm. But what I like is there's so many different kinds of instructors, ages, it. personalities, music like there's a gospel yoga class every sunday morning if that's your thing and then there's like dance party music run and electric this and then you know broadway you class ever get them a bike. like they have like strength classes yoga bar classes they have outdoor i've actually done a couple of the outdoor walking classes mm -hmm. where the coach will be like walk faster slow down you know um so yeah it's a quite a variety and what i love about it is you can be like I don't have an hour, I have 10 minutes. So you can actually uh, filter what you have time for and what you wanna do. So like, I'll be like, I wanna do the bike for 15 minutes, but I don't wanna work really hard. So I'll do 15 minute low impact and they'll show me like 50 classes, you know? And that blew my mind. Okay, so, and that's actually helped me change how I feel about things. So like bef the last, be before the JCC, so even the JCC is about, 15 minutes away from me, I went to this yoga class, it was about 15 minutes, but that means I get in the car, I drive over there, then it's 10 minutes to get there set up, you do your hour class, then you're coming back, and so I'm like, I can't lose two hours out of my day every day, you know, Monday yeah. through Friday, because it's not working for me, but the fact yeah. that I can ride for 20 minutes and do a five minute stretch, Oh, or that I can go and get on, you know, the even the treadmill, there's a 15 or 20 minute yeah. thing. And I'm like, there's meditations. And one of the things that I've been digging, and I did this this weekend, I did the salty walk. So they have these like emotional, so I've done the frustration ride, the anxiety oh, ride. <laughs> They're awesome because like basic, and they're also for me. Now, if, you, if you're a person that just feels really cynical when someone says, we're doing this together. And if you're like, I hate that, you're not gonna like this. But it works for me. I'm like, we are, because I can jump into it with someone else really easy. That's my personality. Sure. And just to have, you know, she's like salty. So we're like, swinging our <laughs> hips and like talking about this and talking smack and i'm like yeah that got that me so fun <laughs> yeah so anyhow whatever it is but like i think you can get a regular trial but i'll try and come back and put that trial in because if you're like me you might like it and if you don't mm -hmm. like it that's okay mm -hmm. i just mm -hmm. didn't i personally didn't know this was available to me for 
until a couple of months ago. That's why I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I love walking, but like I walked outside for an hour and a half and my eyes are still puffy from allergies. Oh yeah, I've got that problem too here in Austin. Yeah, <laughs> lots and, of pollen. And I am now gonna let you cook because ah, I want I want to keep you here all, for like, can we just do this through the weekend? We'll just hang out, chat. We do. We need to have some time together. We need to figure that out. There's so many things we can, I mean, we could talk forever. <laughs> well, and Cheryl really wants to go to Austin. So maybe at some point we can meet up there because there's so much good food in Austin. Good yes. food. food. Yeah, it's, it wasn't like that when I moved here uh, 18 years ago. There was hardly anything. It was like Tex-Mex and uh, barbecue. But now, yeah, we've got a whole vegan you know community here. It's really grown. So, yeah, good food now. And speaking of barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is part of our barbecue series because, you know, us plant, plant eaters, uh, it, it, we can feel left out at a barbecue, right? And um, we don't necessarily want to go get an impossible burger. We might want to, you know, we might want to have something that's more whole. Um, so last time, what did we make? We made the pulled uh, pork, pulled mushroom, um, open mushroom sandwich. And we made the portobello uh, and peppers, uh, like a steak, steak sandwich. So good. Um, yeah. So I had two things in mind today. I might not get to both of them. We'll see. So I'm going to start with the one that's the most exciting if you're going to a barbecue. And um, I learned this from the Wicked Healthy Sarno Brothers because they are like the kings of cooking mushrooms. So what I've got, okay, this is, I think I told you the story. I, I thought I was going to be in San Francisco um, for this. And then my husband sprung it on me that, oh, no, we are leaving Tuesday to come back to Austin. So I'm like, got on the phone with my son. I'm like, you need to get some groceries, make sure I have onions and garlic and this and that. And I'm like, can you see if they've got oyster mus mushroom clusters? And he, he texts me, he's like, no, they don't have any. So I, I'm like, I'm gonna have to bring my mushroom clusters because I'd already gotten them for your show. I'm gonna have to bring them on the plane with me. Cause <laughs> so like I have, I carry hats and like a hat bag. And so like I put them wrapped inside the hat so that they wouldn't get crushed. <laughs> They look so, beautiful. Did you yeah. not get into trouble when you went through security? No, no, they, I don't, they didn't even look at my bag. <laughs> I was worried about that, though. I was. <laughs> I'm like, I'm smuggling mushrooms across the border. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, um, so what we're going to make is really great for barbecue. Now, if you don't, if you're not going to barbecue, I'm going to show you how to do it at home because this is how I do it most of the time um, because it's too hot here to stand outside and barbecue. <laughs> but you can prep these the night before and take them to the bar, throw them in a baggie and take them to the barbecue the next day and throw them on the grill um, if, you know, you're going to one where everybody's grilling. So the technique is, you know, heating up my pan. I'm going to show you. So I made one this morning, and if you can see, ooh, so it's got it's it's a pressed oyster mushroom cluster that I cooked in a cast iron pan. And you actually don't have to have cast iron. Um, that's how I originally learned it from the Sarnos, and I have cast iron. But I've seen people online since then just using a regular pot and pan. So if you don't have cast iron, don't worry about it. But Does the cast iron not press it more, or? Is that yeah, what if you don't have the cast iron, then you want to, you're going to need a little more weight on your upper pan. So kind of like just... old fashioned tofu pressing. Yes, exactly. Um, okay. So let me get my thing started here. So basically, and so when I made it, I have these two, I'm not going to use them here because they're so heavy. Although that would count as exercise. <laughs> I have these two big ones that I use on the stove, but I'm going to use a smaller one here. So you want to heat up your, I've had this heating up on the stove, so it should be at a good spot. So you're going to take your cluster and um, you don't have to use oil. Derek uh, Sarno on the Wicked, uh, Wicked Healthy uh, YouTube channel, I believe, um, he uh, did one with oil and one without. And they, they were both delicious and they both came out great. So, um, so you don't have to use oil. So we're going to put it in the pan and then we're going to get another pan and we're going to press it on top. And because I have an itty bitty one, I'm going to use this one. 
So what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of leave it at a medium, medium high heat. And you're going to, this is where if you have two the same size or something a little heavier on top, it's actually better. And you're going to let it cook for a while and you don't want to move it. You want to just let it sit there. And what's going to happen is the water is going to start coming out of the mushroom and it'll start to get a little crust on it. So we're going to let that sit there. I'm going to put this back on the stove so we can keep it going over here. So you're going to let that go. I don't know, maybe like, you know, 10 minutes or so. And then you, when you, you can season it. So I'm going to season it with, you know, you can use last time we had like a dry rub with, um, onion powder and garlic powder, a little um, smoked paprika is really nice for barbecue flavor. So I'll season it up a little bit and then I'll flip it and I'll press it again. And so you're just going to keep doing that until um, your, your mushroom is going to get really dense and it's not going to be so high anymore. So oh. then, so we're going to let that go for a minute. Oh, I should have prepped one like that, but anyway. It's okay. You have all the time you want. So I was looking in my cabinet. We're just seeing you now. But um, I was looking because I think it was Pinsy's that has a Chicago steak seasoning that I used on. Pinsy's does? Yeah. And it was really pretty fun. I'm trying. Now I'm drawing a blank because I did a steak class, but we did a whole bunch of different things. We did like cabbage steaks and this steak and. But I thought that that um, like cauliflower steaks and he, yeah, <laughs> all the all the things, and we did some mushroom stuff too. I did a a mushroom steak Oscar, and I made oh, what steak Oscar? I was just looking up steak and found it. So it's like crab meat stuffed fillet is what it, or on top it's like a big thing. So what I did is I took jackfruit and I made jackfruit crab and put ah. on top and Cheryl couldn't eat it because she can't eat fish and it, it reminded her too much of fish for her to try it. <laughs> oh that's funny yeah jackfruit's incredible it makes a great like um crab cake. Okay so while that's cooking I'm gonna do a lentil sloppy joe. So and you I can do Sloppy Joes are like the best. They're like the cheapest, laziest meal. Like that's one of my favorite things in the winter too. But it's yeah. it's smart to do it for um, a barbecue or something like that. Yeah. You can keep it warm in like a little slow cooker and have people serve themselves. Yes, absolutely. It's a really great, it's a kind of universally, everybody loves it. But, um, oh, this is so funny. I'm trying to put weight on this pan because I'm not using my big pans and it keeps toppling over. <laughs> so I got to get some more weight on here. Hang on. It's, um, it's totally just like the tofu thing. Like once I had too many animals, I'm like, I have to get a real tofu press or I'm going to kill somebody from <laughs> piling up, you know, pans and cans and stuff. And Kelly's birthday was the 19th. Happy birthday, Kelly. Are you an Aries or did you make Taurus? I get very excited about my Tyrrhenian brothers You're and sisters. Strong, right? Yeah. Yeah. Strong. <laughs> stubborn. Um, strong is a nice way to. I'm like, are you southern? I'm nice saying stubborn. Um, okay, so for the sloppy Joe, now you can do this so much easier, but I'm going to just show you. Uh, this will be on the website. I'm going to post it. Um, I'm using lentils today. But you could use the pulled mushrooms we made last time um, to do this recipe. You could use the mushrooms we're making now. You could use butler soy curls. You could use tempeh. You could use tofu. But today we're going to use lentils. So I'm going to start with onions and uh, um, uh, small diced onions, celery. And it's, I'm supposed to have a, a red bell pepper in here, but um, I forgot to tell my son to get that. So we're not going to have the bell pepper in here today. We'll just you pretend. Use, we'll pretend there's bell pepper in there. Um, so I'm going to make this. And again, you can make this easier where you just do this and you use a barbecue sauce. But I'm actually going to create the sauce as I cook. Um, I'm getting all these Tauruses. Apple's a Taurus. Joanne is a Taurus. DRL is a Taurus. Kelly's an Aries, but I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your, uh, do you know what your rising sign is? 
You know, I don't, I had my birth time for just a second. I'm adopted. So, but I uh -huh. do know that the universe played an evil trick because my moon sign is Pisces. So I'm stubborn and emotional. Thank you, universe. <laughs> How about you? Uh, well, supposedly your rising sign is like your outward personality. So my guess is, because I'm like you, I'm an extroverted introvert. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm a cancer and I'm very much a cancer. Like I have, have to like, before I make a decision, I'm like forward and back, side to side, you know? Um, and I can be a little crabby sometimes. Um, and so definitely the more emotional. But my rising sign is Sagittarius, which is much more, you know, out there, more outgoing. And I think that's why I'm able to do things like this. That's um, interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if my, I, if my rising sign is Cancer, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, or it could be, I don't know, I think you could have a rising sign that's more like kind of fiery almost, or maybe even like a Sagittarius or maybe like a Leo, you know? Hmm. I'll have to think of it. I need to try and track it down again. I gotten it once, but I lost it before I got my chart done. And for me, it's not like, this is how I put it, because I know some people, I like, to like play with touchy feely stuff, you know, that's kind of my thing. And kind of for my whole life, I've just kind of kept this running tally of ask people what their signs are and then I kind of see if it fits what I think. Totally, totally. Instead of like taking, you tell me this and then I fit you in this little yeah. thing. So it's very okay. interesting. Yeah, it's fun to see how it, how it all applies. Um, so I'm going to throw some garlic in here. This, by the way, this is a nonstick pan. I didn't use any oil. You know, we've got all these onions. You don't need oil. It's going to create so much liquid, right? So I'm going to add some, I have some chopped garlic here, some minced garlic. And of course, this smells amazing. Onions and garlic. I've got my mushroom pressing over here. I can hear it's, the water start, starting to come out. So I'll show you that in a second. Okay, and Stephanie is saying, how do you find out your rising sign? You need to know your birth time. You do, your date and time, and I think that might be all. You might also have to know the city you were born in. I can't remember. It can I, be helpful, right? Yeah, and you know, there was a book I had back in the 90s called uh, Your Rising Sign, I think. <laughs> and, um, and it was all, and so if you know your birth uh, day and time, then you can figure it out. So you can probably Google it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but, okay, so we've got this going, um, and then that's going. Okay, what else do you want to talk about while this is cooking? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, here's what I would, I'm going to offer up some possible shortcuts to your recipe, if that's okay. So sure. So let's say you don't have lentils to cook, and you have a can of beans. Can you yeah. drain your cans of beans? Like I've made it, I've made black eyed peas sloppy joes. I made kidney bean sloppy joes. I made kidney bean buffalo sloppy joes. My, if you wanted to make this in an, uh, like a slow cooker, like if you're like, crap, people are coming over to my house today, put some cans of beans in, do whatever seasoning thing she says, but you can use like ground celery seed, garlic powder, uh, onion powder. Say. You, sorry, you can take these lentils and you could put, you know, onion powder, garlic powder, mm -hmm. like you said, a little ketchup, or you could just put your favorite barbecue sauce in there. <laughs> right? There's no shame in feeding people. No, as long as it tastes good. Um, so yeah, I, I, shortcuts are great. And I always try to put shortcuts on um, the website for different recipes. Um, but you certainly could be using onion powder, garlic powder, and some, you know, some of the barbecue seasons like um, smoked paprika. And I'll usually use some um, tomato powder, tomato paste too, because that can make a lot of umami come. Yep, mm -hmm. I knew that. I, I figured that was coming up. Yep, <laughs> yummy. Yeah. And sometimes with things like this too lately, because I've been making my free mushroom powder. And I think oh, we've talked yeah. about where I take the stems out of the big regular mushrooms and I just dehydrate them and then I grind it up so I don't pay any money for it. Now I have like three cups of mushroom powder. I totally need to remember to do that. I, I have to, I'm going to make a note of that. Because it, once you have it, like 
it's a pain if you don't have it because if you're going to order it somewhere it can it can be fairly costly but especially like i got some mushrooms at costco to do stuff for the class <laughs> see Ooh. the water coming out of them and i haven't moved to this mushroom it's just been sitting there with another pan on top so the water's coming out that's amazing and you said you have it on about medium heat i have it on a medium high medium high okay it's really, I find, unless you walk away, it's kind of hard to burn it because there's so much water in them, you know? It's true. That's When I cook onions on my own, I don't put any water in it. But when I'm doing classes, because I do like four or five recipes in the class, if I don't put water in it, I burn them all the time. Because I'll go off <laughs> I, and I'm doing something else. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that if I store it with garlic. I've done that before for sure. Oh, Okay, hang on, my dog's going to go out. Let me open the door. Okay. Live no. show. <laughs> it happens to me too. Max is being quiet. He must be laying outside. He's been enjoying the sunbeam. Yeah, the sun is finally out here. I'm very happy. And the dogs are happy. That's why they want to go out because it was raining before. And they're like, uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> okay. So this, ha I have a chili powder blend in here, which is a Penzi's uh, chili powder blend, but I usually use like Frontier or Trader Joe's. Um, and then I have oregano and some cumin and a little bit of salt. You can leave that out and uh, that's it. So I'm gonna add that to my, um, my aromatics and I'm just gonna let it toast a little bit with those. And then it smells really good. <laughs> I know, it's like the heat activates all those spices and really opens them up. Okay, I'm gonna switch pans so I can show you. I'm gonna flip the mushroom over. Now I feel like you're teaching one of my classes. I'm, I'm multitasking. That's what I do the whole time. So my classes are like two to three hours long. <laughs> and I'm okay. like, woo, let's make something else new. This is such a fun thing to make. And, you know, so meat eaters are astounded by this. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it over. And you can see how it's starting Ooh. to brown. Okay, you know what I meant to season it before I flipped it over. That's okay. I'll season it on this side. Okay, so it's starting to brown. So I'm going to let it sit on this side for a little while with the pan on top of it. Okay. So... Usually what you do is like the uncooked side, you season and flip over and then yeah. put some seasoning on the top as well. Yeah, so I'll do a little onion powder, a little garlic powder, like I said, smoked paprika, maybe a little cumin if you have some kind of dry rub that you like. Um, it could be, yeah, just anything like that. And then um, what we're going to do is baste it with, once it's like flattened and it's cooked down, and it's got like a little bit of browning on it. We're going to take it and we're going to baste it with some barbecue sauce. And then if you're at a barbecue, you're going to throw it on the grill. <clears throat> but I have this, I have a grill pan. Oh, that's... So, yeah. So I can get those, you know, you can get those char marks. Um, but you could also finish it in the oven. I'm pretty sure the Wicked Healthy, they do versions of it where they finish it in the oven as well. But you're just not going to get like those sort of crispy bits and the char marks on it. <clears throat> but it's a, oh, I know what I wanted to say. Um, so they, they're how I learned how to do this, uh, Chad and Derek Sarno. And this is amazing. So there's a guy in Austin, um, his, his name is Franklin, and he's famous for Franklin barbecue. And people, you come to Austin and there's like lines around the block for his barbecue. And he hosts this thing every year. I think it's called like Hot Hot Luck or something. And it's all these, you know, barbecue masters from all over come. And it's like in this open field and they're just cooking a bunch of meat. <clears throat> anyway, Derek and Chad were. Oh, no, we just lost her. So she's going to be coming back on in a minute. You're getting to see the whole area. And here she's coming back in. Let's see. There you go. <laughs> we got cut off. Live video. Yes. Anyway, so Derek and Chad were invited to do their mushroom. 
Wait one me? second. I'm so sorry. Don't it worry. took you out of the big one. So I switched to the big one to you, and then there it was me. <laughs> um, so anyway, so they were invited to do their um, these mushroom cluster steaks at the Franklin Barbecue. So you've got all these barbecuers, famous barbecues doing meat, and then they're doing the mushrooms. And they did it last year for the first time, and everybody loved it. So I'm like, that's so awesome, because these are people, hardcore people who like I want my barbecue meat and they loved the these cluster mushrooms the way we're doing them because they get like a really meaty texture and um the only thing i could compare it to really is like a <clears throat> if you were if you did eat meat at one point in your life and you ate skirt steak okay it's kind of bad. so and it even kind of looks like it so i'm gonna like let me see if i can get the cutting okay. board okay so I'm going to cut one up so you can see. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. And so you just oh, wow. cut it. Yeah. And, and like this bit is going to be the best, but it's like a little crispy and caramelized. Right. And so like they, you know, they're like, those are the crispy, like the meat tips, you know, when you're cooking a steak. Um, for those of you who didn't eat meat before, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, so yeah, you can cut this up and, and then have it on your, a sandwich or just have it with some mashed potatoes um, and, you know, some, you know, grilled vegetables, however you want to do it. But it's so, I can't even tell you how delicious this is. I and want one right now. Yeah. So if you're, ha and if you're having like meat eaters over and you really want to, you know, impress them, this is a really great dish for that. That's awesome. Yummy. And I just, I've really been craving mushrooms a lot the past couple of years and wanting to eat more and more of them, which I have a couple of people in Kathy's Cooking Club who are not pro mushrooms. So I try to find alternatives. Well, you but, know what's interesting is my son, um, who's 19, Judah, he hates mushrooms. He will not eat them. But he will eat this because it doesn't even taste like a mushroom anymore. It's like just a crispy, sweet and savory barbecued, you know, um, flavoring. So you try, you know, you never know, you might like it. And that's the way I feel too. Like I have some friends too that are like, we don't like mushrooms and I, so I chop some up, put them in some white beans. They were awesome, right? And they were like, oh, these were good. Yeah. So I okay, think- so I told him to pick up a can of lentils um, just because I thought that would be easier, but um, he didn't, so I cooked them, which is super easy. <laughs> so that'll be part of the recipe. You put a, one cup of lentils, I like to put a bay leaf in, in three cups of water, and um, yeah, bring it to a boil, put a lid on, simmer it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Ooh, and Barb is saying if you've got a Cuisinart griddler, that would work great for the mushroom cluster. And so oh, I guess, I don't what know, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it while you're doing this. I'm assuming okay. it's more of like a panini press kind of thing. And oh, I yeah. do have a panini press. Oh, I do too, that's a great idea. I'm gonna try that. Okay, the, I just put the, um, I meant to put the- It is. Tomato paste in first, but anyway, you're gonna put this in before the lentils and then the tomato sauce, I'm gonna mix it all up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of maple syrup Yum. just to give it a little bit of sweet. So like about three, two or three tablespoons. And then I'm going to put in some mustard, about a tablespoon. And mix it up. And then, oops, this one's not open yet. I do okay. that all the time. <laughs> all right, tell us about that. What's it called again? The Cuisinart Griddler. It does look like a panini press. And so I know I have... There's something just yummy about like a toasty warm sandwich. But I love eating sandwiches. But I like that because you would probably even get grill marks with it too. Yeah, you would get grill marks. The only thing is you'd have to make sure you have something to catch the liquid. Yes. <laughs> a lot of liquid comes out. So you'd probably, you know how it has the little drain, you'd want to have something under there. Okay, I'm going to take a look. So now you can see it's a, the liquid has been kind of cooked off. 
And that's part of what gives it such an amazing flavor too, because that, that mushroom juice reducing is such a yeah. wonderful, strong umami flavor. Yeah, and, um, and it's what gives it that really nice texture. You know, and for people, I think this is also a great, um, one of the reasons I really like this is because, you know, it makes a great meat, meat analog. Um, and it's not processed, right? So like mm -hmm. if you're trying to avoid, um, you know, the processed food, this is a great option because it's a whole food. And as Dr. Furman says, you know, it's something you should eat in the every day, part of your G-bombs, right? Well, and I know when I eat mushrooms often, it seems to make me personally feel better. I don't know what's in them, but whatever it is, my body seems to be like, yeah, more of that. Yeah loaded with like all sorts of minerals and antioxidants and oftentimes vitamin D, which most of us are deficient in. So yeah, Hand that, raised. <laughs> I'm on mega doses of D and I have been for like a decade. Oh yeah, I had to do that for a while. Why are, are you on it? Um, I just always test low. Cheryl tests like in the Hobbit level, like that she lives underground. So and even when I was walking more through the pandemic and sitting out and working on the deck, it still just didn't seem to do it. They say with the sunscreen, and I'm, I have to tell you, I wasn't wearing sunscreen then because I wasn't out that much. But even without sunscreen, it doesn't seem to get absorbed that much by me. Well, okay, so that's interesting because I, um, for, would go, deliberately for years, walk, you know, go out with my dogs between like 10 and noon and without sunscreen on just so I get my vitamin D. And this was about 10 years ago. I was having this horrible fatigue where every day I had to like lie down in the afternoon. Like just, I'm like, something's not right. So I had blood work done and apparently I was really horribly deficient in vitamin D. And um, I said, well, I don't understand that. Like I go out in the sun every day without sunscreen. And they said, some people just, their bodies don't make it from the sun. Mm -hmm. So she put me on high doses and sure enough, I felt like better immediately. And now I just take it regularly. Yeah, I just take, I take mega doses, but I just take it like once or twice a week. And it's, and Apple was saying it is the vitamin D in the mushrooms that was making me feel better. And that also maybe eggplant could sub for mushrooms in certain recipes. And I, I it does have that same nice dark flavor. Yeah, you could get that smoky flavor. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and Apple has another tip. Geographical latitude also impacts vitamin D absorption. Huh, I didn't know that. I hadn't thought about that, but that makes sense, doesn't it? This is my favorite barbecue sauce. I can't get it anywhere but here. It's Austin's own. Ooh. <laughs> you can use your favorite barbecue sauce. You could use Trader Joe's, I find to be a little sweet in Kansas City, but it's good. <clears throat> that bone sucking sauce is good. So I'm just going to baste this mushroom that I pressed with the barbecue sauce. And then I'll show this before we leave because this was one I still haven't tried it. That's pretty daggone whole food plant based. It does oh, have a little bit of salt. You told me about this one. Yeah. What's it called again? It's Last time I mentioned it. True Made Foods. This one's Pitmaster Barbecue Sauce, East Carolina. So Carolina Barbecue Sauce. I'm going to put this on. It's vinegar based. Okay, that's sizzle. You want to have your grill pan really hot so you get that, that, that sound. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Um, and obviously, if you're outdoors, you're going to put it on the grill. But you can do, so up until this point, you can press it, baste it, put it in a baggie, and take it to your barbecue the next day or later that day. That's great. So, your barbecue sauce, I want oh. to see, because you talked about this last time. I did. And so you can't, I don't have anything big. Let's see if this will. It's not focusing on it because it's, it's not as big as my head. What do you love about it? There you go. What I like are the ingredients. So I was so the ingredients are apple cider vinegar, butternut squash, carrots, salt, black pepper, red pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, sage, and turmeric. Ta da! That sounds fantastic. And but so, gosh, that's a great idea for a barbecue sauce because it's a little sweet. Probably gives it a little tech, like thickness. 
Right. And so now, and the different barbecues from different areas, like Texas barbecue is more tomato based. Like there's Eastern North Carolina is, um, sometimes it'll look just like vinegar. When you go more towards the west side of North Carolina, it's vinegar and tomato. And Joanne is saying that she's a South Carolina barbecue sauce fan, and that would be adding mustard. So sometimes it's a yellow barbecue sauce. Wow. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen one like that. That sounds good. I love mustard. It's, it's really interesting. And you guys can look up any of these sauces. And if you find a sauce and you can't figure out how to whole food plant base it, just email me and I'll give you some swaps that you could do. But sauces are just kind of amazing and they can take something that's really plain. Like let's say, I don't know, let's say your family's not digging cauliflower, but they love barbecue, right? That's why we have buffalo cauliflower wings. So we can have barbecue cauliflower wings or we can even have, you know, we can make barbecue cabbage steaks. If Cheryl, who is Polish, half Polish, doesn't like cabbage. So I have to put a lot of flavors in there to get her to eat cabbage. It's crazy. The cauliflower, cauliflower is a really great, uh, makes a great steak, definitely. In fact, Lauren Burnick has a really good recipe that she does. Has she done that on your show? No, but I need to have her back on right now. For the summer, I was just kind of having the new regular guests, you and um, Stephanie, and I can't believe Rachel. All I, could, all I can remember was her last name, and I'm like, Detroit. Rachel Detroit. Yes. Um, I, okay, so I'm basting it before I flip it. Getting, oh. the, getting the grill marks. <laughs> okay, so sloppy joe to me isn't a sloppy joe without slaw. So really? Last, yes, I like to have that barbecue-y, goopy stuff with some slaw and some pickles and some hot sauce. So um, last time on your show, I made the, the mayonnaise. So I made some this morning. So uh, if you want to, the mayonnaise recipe, um, it's got uh, silken tofu. It's got a little cashew. You could leave that out if you're trying to go lower fat. And um, aquafaba, the chickpea water. But if you don't have that, and even if you do, my new ingredient, which I actually have to add to the recipe on the website, is grinding up chia seeds because it gives that, that sort of gelatinous uh, thing. <laughs> and some seasonings like onion and garlic. And uh, I use the black salt, which we talked about last time, um, which is the that eggy sulfurous uh, kala namak salt. Yeah. So, but you don't, if you're not doing salt, you can just leave that out and you'll still have a great mayo. So. Yeah. And I think it's so funny because we, in, in North Carolina, you get a barbecue sandwich and it comes with, with a mayo coleslaw on it. Like that is a thing. So it's so funny that my mind is blown by you putting this on a sloppy Joe because most people oh, is that mind... like, yeah, I'm like weird. I'm like, oh no, she thinks it's so weird. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I never thought it because like a Carolina burger, so vegan or not, comes with chili and coleslaw. That's, oh, a, wow. that's a big thing here. So like if you got a, a burger all the way or a hot dog all the way, it has chili and coleslaw on it. Mm. So I think I just need to start thinking about the bean sloppy Joe as being the chili part. And then oh, yeah. I can understand. It's so yeah, weird. And then, you know, coleslaw, like you're doing, going to an outdoor barbecue, potato salad, coleslaw. And this slaw is so good. Um, I love my own mayo recipe. <laughs> I think it's really good. Um, and then, so I'm going to, I think the lentils are ready. They've been simmering with the tomato sauce and the paste and, and all the seasonings. And so I'm going to um, assemble a sandwich here. Yum. Now, I really love uh, bread and butter pickles, but I didn't tell my son to get those. So I'm going to use a little sweet relish. But I also like dill pickles. So I'm going to put some dill pickle on it too. And I I've like all my, the pickles. 
And this is Ezekiel bun, the sprouted uh, sprouted grain bun that you can usually get in the freezer section. And I'm gonna put the gonna assemble my my sandwich. And I gotta tell you something, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry now too. Oh, I wish I could pass you a plate. I know. I felt that way after class on Saturday. A friend of mine who lives in Boston was kind of like, I'm hungry. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could feed you. I have five things I made today. <laughs> well, that's another reason why we need to get together in person, because I want you to feed me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat your food. Okay, so I've got my, so this is why it's a sloppy joe, right? Because it's just going to squish all over when you eat it. Have to have lots of napkins around. I and love it. Put on my slaw. I think I did this with the pulled pulled uh, mushroom sandwich last time. But to me, it's like you can do this with the the mushrooms that we're making today. So there's the slaw. So pretty. And because I don't have the sweet pickles, I'm going to put some sweet relish on the top part of the bun. And Kelly's saying she has to make this because it sounds delicious. Uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. It's really good, super easy. You can use canned lentils. Um, and I'll definitely put like both versions on the website. I haven't put it up yet, but I will. And I'll put the one that, where you don't have to bother even doing all this cooking. You could just use a can of lentils and some onion powder, garlic powder, can of tomato sauce. So I have spears. <laughs> so I sliced up my... Uh, and there it is. And so the only other thing I might put on here is some hot sauce. Oh, and that looks so good. I take a bite, but then I won't be able to talk to you because I'll get it all over me. <laughs> a lot of times when I do sloppy joes, like I'll just put it on toast and eat it with a, a fork. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Like beans and toast. Yeah. Long, but that's how we did it long before I understood that people ate beans for breakfast. So that's back in my southern roots. But Kathy <laughs> says, speaking of condiments on top, I bet your raw chopped onions on top would be great. And I bet they would. Absolutely. Pickled jalapenos would be good. Oh. Raw. Um, you know what? Sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut. Oh. Kimchi. Maybe <laughs> really you could... There are no rules, right, Kathy? You got to use what you love. We need to make like some kind of something like this, but instead of sloppy Joe seasonings, it's like um, Reuben, so like corned beef, because I do make a bunch of things with corn. I've, I've done corned soy curls, corned mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Barb says kimchi, yes. Mm -hmm. And Joanne says that sandwich is huge. And Barb is saying, are all the recipes on your website. So I'm gonna to switch to both of us and it's weheal.health slash all dash recipes. Is it, is it? That's <laughs> what you know. sent me. So <laughs> that's what I've okay. got up here. <laughs> if, you, if you just go to weheal.health and go under resources too. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize that it said that. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> well, I, I, whenever we're on together, it has your name and your link too, because I want to make sure that everybody can come and get that. And don't forget, if you're interested, tell them the name of the book one more time so they can go to Amazon. I think it's in the notes too, but go to Amazon. You can pre-order it. And the thing about pre-ordering a book, and I don't know if you know this or not, if you pre-order it and the price drops at all between the time you pre-order and the time it comes out, you get the lowest price on Amazon in specific. So if you ever have a favorite author that you know their book is coming out in six months to a year, it behooves you to order it. You don't pay for it until it comes out. Yeah, and um, I don't think, I'm not sure if you can pre-order the paperback. I think you can only pre-order the Kindle right now. Okay. But the paperback will be, for some reason, I don't know, they haven't had a weird rule around that. Um, so on Monday, May 1st, you can order the paperback. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, so the book doesn't have recipes in it. It's, um, it's really about wellness and, um, and integrating diet and lifestyle and all these other incredible modalities that uh, Dr. Letterman and Dr. Pulde bring to our practice, We Heal. 
Um, and like I said, I got to contribute some chapters, including the nutrition chapter. Um, so a lot of, you know, a lot of things we talked about today are in that chapter. Well, I think it's good because like, it's good to have a little bit of everything. And, and also wherever you guys are at this moment, you know, decide if, if you're ready to take on some more doctor's information. I know a lot of you have been in the whole food plant-based community a long time. And when you are, it's always good to get tips from different people and kind of, I always learn something from anybody doing anything. So if you made exactly, if you made, someone just asked, would we make Cincinnati chili? So I, can, I have a Cincinnati chili recipe, so I can do that live too. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. What's a Cincinnati chili? It's like this Greek diner chili. So it has like cinnamon and like Greek mm -hmm. ingredients. So it's a different, and like the way it's usually, it's served, I'm gonna forget all the things. So usually it's a meaty chili, and then you can get it like with kidney beans and cheese and raw onions over spaghetti Ooh. it's served over spaghetti too that's the other weird thing about it wow that sounds good just like kind of like a chunky marinara sauce right kind of <laughs> and it's it, it's very interesting and i do if you go to healthyslowcooking.com and look that up i have a small slow cooker version um but i've been playing with it a little bit more so i might I think I taught it in a class recently too, and I may have done an Instant Pot version. I'll check. If I do, I'll try and get it on plant-based Instant Pot. Um, um, one of the things I wanted to mention about the book, this is really important. I'm certain not paying so much attention, but you know, Matt and Alona were the doctors from Forks Over Knives and their whole career has been um, as uh, diet and lifestyle medical doctors, right? And um, they still, you know, the uh, whole food plant-based diet is still really the foundation of their practice. But the reason why they created this new model, there are many reasons why. But one of those things, uh, one of the main reasons is what is because we saw they for decades and I working with them in the clinic saw um, so many people who wanted to do this, wanted to change and couldn't. So you know, you can, you know, give everyone the information, show them how to do it. But there were other reasons why they weren't able to adopt a whole food plant-based diet or do start doing healthy things from the, themselves moving every day. Um, so, and a lot of those things, they, they range from everywhere from horrible trauma in the background, in their background to stress at work, um, not getting along with their partner, um, having problems with their family. So what the tools that we heal offer just really help you. It's, it's called wellness to wonderful because the premise is that you can get well, everyone can get well. Um, and the average doctor is going to treat you for being sick and they're going to get you back to baseline. Right. But for a lot of people, baseline isn't, all that great. It's okay. You know, you're not sick anymore, but are you happy? Are you, is life wonderful? And so the tools that We Hill offers and that are in the book, and the book is fantastic. Matt and Alone are just amazing. Um, really gives you all these different things to think about in terms of health beyond diet and lifestyle, which of course is the foundation, but ways to help you and support you and look at, you know, just feeling your best, your whole, your whole body and mind and soul. Well, I love that. And I also like, I've worked with some people too that feel like it's only one part of that, right? So I think a lot of different people focus on the part they can. Obviously, I focus on the food, right? Yes. Oh, it's so yes. it's so good. But it's, I it's could... oh, I wish I could smell it. it. Yeah, and the food is important, Kathy. I mean, it's, it is. Well, and I've, I've partnered up with some people at one point that kind of, they were like, okay, so it's, the food is important for some people, but it's like, the, for me, I think you can't, you can't just exercise your way out of it, right? It's the way I look at, like, you can't, you can't necessarily just, you know, perfect your diet out of it either. It really is more of a holistic effort, but 
I think you're more likely to be able to do less exercise and eat a perfect diet than eat a bad diet and like, cause you'd have to, like you don't burn up that many calories exercising. I mean, yeah. you burn up some well, and, and I'm sure an, an I, athlete would burn up more than me. Yeah, for sure. Um, but as we talked about before, like when you eat more whole food plant-based, you're naturally going to get to the weight that's right for you. But the other thing I wanted to say is that, you know, I had definitely also had clients in the clinic who were 100% whole food plant-based, but they still had high blood pressure. And why is that? Because when I would meet with them, their stress was through the roof. So mm -hmm. while they were healthier and lean and exercising, they go to the gym, they're eating whole food plant-based, they needed to get their stress under control. Or I'd have people coming in who were doing great with everything, but they weren't getting any sleep. So like their cortisol levels were still elevated. So that's kind of what this is about. It's like, yes, the diet is the foundation, but you know, to really, really optimize your health and feel your best, you've got to really look at all these things. And what you do is such a huge service because when people transition to a whole food plant-based diet, they think that they can't eat the foods they love anymore. And what you're showing them and what I'm trying to show them is that you can take your favorite dishes and you can just make them whole food plant-based. I think it's kind of what we're all trying to do in this, you know, in this community um, because we've been doing it for so long. Well, and I think, and everybody kind of takes their own different approach, which is perfect because there's so many different kinds of people. But I think it's, mm -hmm. it's very tough to ask you to give up everything that has a, a, a warm memory for you. And I think yes. it's also the way that we did this, like you doing this today is showing you can have these flavors in a different way. And that can still provoke that warm, fuzzy, warm memory. And I think that that's <laughs> what helps us keep going. Cause like, you know, sometimes Sometimes I just want some queso and something crunchy. I've had a bad day. And then I make my little zero alcohol margarita. That works for me. But you know what? Then I make oat cheese or cauliflower cheese that tastes better than most of the quesos you can get out somewhere, right? Because I can control it. And so it's just a matter of going, not only what's the best thing I can do, kind of having some things for those days where maybe you're not going to want steamed vegetables and brown rice because yeah, I mean, food is celebratory, right? It's social. And this enables you to do all those things and, you know, just start, you know, and I'm sure most of the people watching are already probably mm -hmm. doing this a lot, but you know, if it seems intimidating, don't think about three meals a day, every day, think about, you know, your one meal a day you know, and don't overwhelm yourself with, I gotta get all these ingredients and you know what it's like, you'll go and you'll shop and you'll fill your fridge and then everything rots because you're like, oh, I don't have time. So just like get one that you can do really well to start and then, you know, get that in rotation and then do another one. Well, and the thing is too, like one of my, if I know I'm gonna have a tough week, I cook up a bunch of rice like a, we've got a bunch of brown rice in there. And so one of my not whole food plant-based backups is Tasty Bites. You know, the little Indian food in packets. Because you yeah. know what? We can have our own Indian buffet for under $10. Or we can mm -hmm. go get Indian food that, and if you get the, the meals ready to eat at the Indian store, they're often better, but they do often have a little more oil in them. Mm -hmm. And you can, if when you're in the goods place, you can make a bunch of Indian food and freeze it and use it that way. Yeah. But we always have cans of beans. Even though I have beans frozen in the freezer, we always have Tasty Bites. You know, there's mm -hmm. certain things that's like, we always have pasta and jarred sauce in the house because me doing three tasty bites for us to usually what happens is we heat three up and we're like ooh we have all the variety and we eat like not even half of it and then there's two more lunches that we have for tomorrow that I don't have to think about and so if you give yourself a little grace for some things mm -hmm. like it's still better than ordering a pizza with no cheese yeah it's, yeah. it's better than going and getting chips and salsa 
and yes. crunchy tacos that have been deep fried, even if they have beans in them. Mm -hmm. And just, just give yourself some space for not being perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I think making it easy for yourself, you know, not, not putting, not having it be so intimidated. Like everything you talked about is so easy to do, right? If you have it in your pantry. Um, I love the canned uh, low fat or fat free refried beans. Those are good for a quick taco or burrito. Like you said, the tasty bites and spices and seasonings, barbecue sauce, ketchup, mustard, sauerkraut, pickles. So you still can enjoy the flavor. And I totally agree. And so like even let's say you made those lentils as your bean for the week, you could have done some with that, with what you did today. You could. I could make it a burrito with the, with the sloppy joe lentils. Absolutely. Put some chili powder. So like you can make a big batch of beans of any kind. Don't season them. Then mm -hmm. I can put garam masala. I can put, you mm -hmm. know, I also keep jars or bottles of gluten-free stir fry sauces so that I can throw some tofu in the air fryer, take some frozen vegetables, and then that can go on my rice. So even though sometimes we do things fancy, like Lisa, you would probably do the mushroom steak and you probably wouldn't do the sloppy joes at the same time, right? You probably would have done yeah. one or the other. So a lot of times mm -hmm. you'll see Lisa or me, I, I totally do this too. I'll do two or three things on somebody's live because I want to share all that information. And I think sometimes people look at that and go, well, I can't do all that. You don't have to. If all you do today is steam up some rice or cook some quinoa, I am proud of you. <laughs> yes, yes. Just have the, have the ingredients. The most important thing, you have them, you can make them. And yeah, we could do a whole you know show. I'm sure you've done it on batch cooking. We could do a whole show on assembling whole food plant-based meals without even, that doesn't require cooking. There's a lot of different options we can do. We'll probably, let's think about doing that in the fall if you're still willing to hang out with me every week. Oh my gosh, any excuse to hang out with you. You tell me and we'll do it. <laughs> you're the best because I'm loving this barbecue idea because I think, like right now it may seem a little early to some people, but once it starts, then barbecue can mean a lot of things. And I'm, I supposedly said I'm going to teach a grill class. I still haven't lit the grill yet. So I got to get on that because I think I'm teach I'm going to teach one of those in June. Do, are you doing it outside? I I will have to. Yeah, if it's really so June, yeah, maybe I should try. <laughs> I haven't done May. I haven't put up May and June classes yet. Going to be doing that this weekend, so maybe I will do it in May. But that means I got to figure it out quick. And we're going to we'll do another barbecue class. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got a couple. Okay. You can do That'll May, June, and July. So. Fantastic. There's well, so many you. great things you can throw in. Oh, I was just going to say thank you so much for just being you and so generous with all your information. And I so appreciate you. And I know the community appreciates you. Well, I appreciate you. And I'm really grateful to you and your community. And I love being here. And uh, yeah, let's let's do more. I, I, I still that we have to figure out a way to be in the same city because we've got to hang out in person. <laughs> I know we're, we will figure it out and it is going to be so much fun when it happens. But until well, then. You. Oh, and thank you for all the wonderful questions too. just thank you for the great questions. It's really um, great. And I hope that I was able to help shed some light on some of those questions. I think so. I think we had a really good starter conversation and I think we've got a lot of a lot of good ideas and people thinking about things and it's juicy. We had a juicy conversation. Yeah. Thank well, you. I hope you get some sleep tonight and you have fun in Austin and I'll try not to be I'm I'm like super jealous if you're in San Francisco or Austin. But <laughs> I'll, I'll just try to keep it to myself, but eat, eat okay. something tasty for me. I will. Until you come visit, we'll just, you know, we'll do this. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much today. Thank try you. and be a little kind to yourself. 
got a little extra, be kind to somebody else, even if it's just smiling at them. It doesn't have to be real extroverty or anything like that, okay? You guys have an amazing rest of your week. I'll see some of you on Saturday in my class, Kathy's Cooking Club. We're gonna do tempeh recipes. And if you look wherever you're watching this, there is a discount code for you. Happy birthday to me, to you. <laughs> so for $10, you can come and take the live class and come hang out with me and enjoy my birthday. So I would love that. Happy birthday, happy. Yay, and happy birthday to all the Aries that have passed and the Tauruses that are coming up. and. Um, that's all I can think of saying, so I'm going to say goodbye now.